The average size of TV screens has gotten bigger over the years, from the days of small tube televisions to home projectors that can project massive 120-inch images. Since 2017 alone, the average size of LCD TVs in North America has jumped from 49 inches to 55 inches, and more and more people are opting for larger displays. The biggest TVs on the market, like TCL's massive 115-inch behemoth, are still out of reach for most. But 98-inch TVs that used to cost at minimum tens of thousands of dollars can now be found for as low as a mere four or five thousand. Safe to say the interest in larger TVs is growing. But is bigger always better? Hi, I'm Alex from Ratings.com, and today we're talking about TV size. While you might be tempted to get the biggest TV you can buy, there is such a thing as too big, just as there are TVs that are too small. Not everyone has the flexibility to set up their home theater the way they want. Whether it's working around an inconveniently placed window, or an unavoidable fireplace that lands you on r slash TV too high. Because you often can't control things like living room size and viewing distance, it's important to choose the right TV size for your viewing conditions. Firstly, the distance at which you view your TV is by far the most important factor to consider before choosing a size. That's because viewing distance determines your horizontal field of view. In simple terms, that's how much of your visual field a TV fills. Humans have a horizontal field of view of over 200 degrees. The farther you place your TV, the less of your visual field the screen will occupy. At a small field of view, details are harder to make out, and the viewing experience isn't all that impressive. Move closer to a wider viewing angle, and it becomes much easier to perceive small details, read text or subtitles, and the TV just feels more immersive. But at what point does a TV start to feel too big? Some would say there's no such thing, but depending on the content, getting a TV that's too big for your viewing distance can actually be a detriment. Let's say you want to watch the Leafs blow their chance at winning the Stanley Cup again. If your TV fills too much of your field of view, it can be hard to keep track of what's going on screen, because you'll have to move your eyes around the screen to take in all the details. This is especially a problem when watching sports like hockey or soccer, with a lot of movement around the entire frame. Likewise, it can be harder to follow content with subtitles if you have to physically move your eyes back and forth between subtitles and what's playing out on screen. At a more reasonable distance, you can take in more of the image and subtitles all at once. And of course, while some gamers prefer to sit extra close to a bigger screen for more immersion, HUD elements around the edges of the frame become harder to keep track of when the screen fills a very wide field of view. So if the porridge is too hot at one end and the porridge is too cold on the other, where is the Goldilocks sweet spot? The de facto standard by the Society of Motion Picture and Television Engineers, or SMPTE, is that the image on screen should occupy no less than 30 degrees of a viewer's horizontal field of view. THX, of deep note fame, has its own recommendations for cinemas to be THX certified. They suggest a viewing angle of 36 degrees for the farthest seat in the theater, with a minimum acceptable viewing angle of 26 degrees. But for an immersive home theater experience, THX's size recommendation is based on a viewing distance that gives you a 40 degree field of view. Others may recommend going wider. And that's not even getting into recommendations from other organizations like Cedia or 20th Century Fox for CinemaScope content. All that to say, it depends on who you ask. These recommendations vary because viewing environments and personal preferences also vary. Some freaks actually enjoy sitting in the front row of the movie theater, while others feel sick and get eye strain when sitting that close. Ultimately, there's a fairly wide range of acceptable fields of view here, but the recommended 30 degree minimum from the SMPTE is what we base our TV size to distance calculator on. Just input your viewing distance and you'll see the ideal TV size for that distance. On the flip side, if you already have a TV and have some flexibility on where to place your couch, you can see the ideal viewing distance for your size. If you want to calculate for yourself, simply divide your viewing distance in inches by 1.6 which will get you an approximate 30 degree horizontal viewing angle. That field of view will work well for most people when watching mixed content, but if you're looking for a bit more immersion, you can opt for the 40 degree recommendation from THX by either moving up your couch or choosing a slightly bigger TV. We realize that a lot of people want that immersive cinematic experience at home, so we even have a handy chart that shows you the distances for both fields of view. While we've mostly been focused on viewing distance and field of view, there is one other factor that plays a role here resolution. Most TVs on the market today are 4K TVs, so the resolution of your display is largely a non-issue. However, at a far enough distance, it's harder for the human eye to resolve the differences between 4K, 1080p, and lower resolution content. There's a minimum threshold, depending on your TV size and viewing distance, for seeing the benefits of a higher resolution display. For example, the distance at which the human eye can actually process the details in 4K content on a 65-inch TV is about 4 feet. Beyond 8.5 feet, however, the eye won't really be able to distinguish between 1080p and 4K. 
While your next TV will most likely be a 4K TV anyway, knowing this range can help you figure out the optimal viewing distance to take full advantage of your TV's resolution and capabilities. Since bigger TVs are becoming more affordable, you might also be wondering if you should prioritize size over performance. Well, that isn't always clear cut. Let's say you're trying to decide between a 65 inch TCL QM7K or a 75 inch TCL QM6K. The QM7K may be the better TV overall, but if you have to sit 12 feet away from it, its benefits over the larger QM6K will be lost on you. That's why it's important to figure out the right size for your viewing conditions first. Once you have that magic number, then you should buy the best TV in that size that falls within your budget. As we've hopefully made clear, choosing a TV size isn't as simple as just buying the biggest TV you can find. You have to consider the conditions in which you'll be viewing it and make sure it fits your budget. Thankfully, we've made this calculation easy for you with our size to distance calculator. Our tool is based on the SMPTE minimum 30 degree field of view, but this is just a starting point. A lot of this comes down to personal preference too. If you want a more immersive cinematic experience, you can always adjust your viewing distance to get closer to a 40 degree field of view or choose a size and distance based on whatever feels most comfortable to you. It's your living room after all. While you may let us in for a time to help you find the best products for your needs, you're the one that has to live in it. Until next time, I'm Alex from ratings.com. Bye. I'll, maybe I'll do like a <laughs> like a <laughs> THX of deep note fame <laughs> has its own recommendations for cinemas to be THX. <laughs> 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 Damn it, I was just trying to get through the sentence. <laughs>